Morning, everybody. Welcome to the Monday morning version of Bible reading and coffee drinking. I am KJ with Living Christian. Hope you guys are doing well today. We are reading James 4 today. Wait for people to come in. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Get your Bible ready. Get your coffee. We're going to dive into James 4 here in just a second. We're almost done with James already. It's quick. It's a quick, uh, you know, five chapter book. So, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, if this is your first time, my name is KJ. I oversee a living Christian here, and we do this every Monday and every Friday. Uh, we read James this uh, this week, so we'll be in James 4 today, and then James 5 on Friday, and we will be done with James. So I'm about to pick a new uh, book. Daily on Family, you guys are just fantastic. So they just bought the first badge, as they usually do every single time. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you so, so much. Uh, so the, the badges are on always. I don't even turn those on anymore. That's just the way it works on Instagram now. But if you do have a question, put a question uh, in the little question box down here. I think there are badges. I'm not sure where all your buttons are down here, but <laughs> check the, the one with the question mark. Throw a question in there. When we get done with reading James 4, uh, I'll answer some questions. We'll, we'll chit-chat a little bit. All right? Uh, so if this is your first time... Do what uh, Oklahoma just did and put your location in the comments. I love to see the location. I'm uh, I'm outside of Austin, Texas. I'm not sure if anybody on here has been to Austin, Texas before, but it's uh, beautiful. It's supposed to be almost 70 degrees today, so we're thankful for that. Uh, it was been cold for the last week. It's terrible. What's your prayer this morning? I'm not sure what my prayer this morning is. Maybe you guys can help me out and throw some prayer requests in the uh, comments, and I'll hit them. Obviously, we want to pray for... Yeah, situation still uh, developing the, in the Ukraine and Russia. Uh, we're going to continue to pray for that situation and peace uh, in our time for sure. So that's going to be the part of our prayer at the end. So uh, thank you, Terry Ray uh, bought a badge. Thank you guys very much. I uh, would love to move there. Uh, you know what? Everybody wants to move here for crying out loud. Um, uh, part of it is uh, now the housing prices and everything so jacked up uh, and expensive. So uh, we may have to get out of here at some point. Too many people. Uh, so hopefully you guys are doing well. Let's see. Uh, Macedonia, that's pretty far away. Fiji, Fiji's pretty far away too. I always wonder who the farthest uh, person is from uh, from Austin, Texas. Kenya. Uh, so if um, if you're in Kenya or somewhere else, uh, halfway across the world, South Africa, um, you know, get your. I don't know what you drink. What time? What time of the day is it over there? It's uh, eight o'clock in the morning here. What time of the day is it over there? Somebody put in their. Uh, uh, where you're located and what time of the day it is. I have no idea what, what time of the day it would be in Kenya. Probably 8 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night maybe. I know, uh, I want to say London, six hours ahead of us. Uh, good morning, New York. Hello, India. Indonesia, that's a good one too. 16.03, all right, perfect. Uh, pray for Ukraine. So uh, a couple of housekeeping things as before we dive into James 4. Uh, hopefully you guys have checked out my podcast uh, it is l legit called Bible Reading and Coffee Drinking, so I named it after this uh, little session we do on Mondays and Fridays. So check that out on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, you can also go to my website, livingchristian.org slash podcast, and, and uh, you can uh, listen to all those and subscribe to them, please. We're just getting going. Our first uh, two uh, episodes hit last week. Uh, I'm going to try to schedule them out for Tuesdays and Fridays, so I'll have a new one tomorrow already recorded. I did it. I finished it up on Saturday. I'm pointing to my other computer over here. Uh, so that'll launch uh, tomorrow morning. I have it auto scheduled about 7 a.m. Uh, my time. Uh, so uh, 23 hours from now, we'll have a new episode uh, diving into Matthew 24. Uh, so that'll be fun. Check out the podcast if you haven't already. I, I appreciate the uh, support on that. I'm kind of excited about it. It's fun to do, to be honest with you. Uh, so we, uh, we read some uh, Bible. We do some prayers. Uh, and I answer some of your questions. So, uh, if you go to the uh, livingchristian.org slash podcast, there's a little place there for you to submit a question, and I'll answer some of your questions during the podcast as well. And finally, uh, today is the last day for the hoodie sale, so I know a bunch of you guys have ordered hoodies and sweatshirts from our site. Uh, today is the last day. It's the last day of the month. Tomorrow's March. Can you believe that? So we'll do some spring stuff here coming up, uh, but from the hoodies and the sweatshirts and the end of winter sale, uh, I am turning my calendar tomorrow in Texas to springtime. Uh, that's how it works for here in Texas. Is it on Spotify? It is on Spotify. It is. Uh, Dr. Though, Drew Though, I think your name is. Sorry, you went by real quick. Uh, it is on Spotify, Apple, Google, everywhere. Amazon even. I think I got it up on Amazon last week, which is a challenge, but it's up there. Uh, so yeah, podcast is everywhere you can find podcasts. 
livingchristian.org slash podcast has all the links. Okay? We are reading <clears throat> We are reading uh, James 4. I'm going to actually pin that tweet or pin that post. Give me a second so everybody knows what we're reading. There. Today we are reading James 4. Uh, it is uh, pinned on the bottom of my uh, screen here. Uh, so let's dive in, and we can talk about the podcast and stuff later. But uh, I know you guys are probably tired of hearing about that. I've been chatting about it for about a month. Uh, so get a sip of coffee, and let's dive into James 4, uh, drawing close to God. All right. Um, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil's desire, desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take oh, take it away from them. Wow, is that timely. Yet uh, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what gives you pleasure. All right, let's, uh, let's unpack that a little bit, okay? I mean, especially the... Uh, Line in verse 2 there. You are jealous what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. So isn't that, isn't that uh, a kind of a microcosm or a reflection of what we're dealing with uh, in the world right now? Uh, you know, Russia wants Ukraine. Uh, you know, Putin wants a territory. And he's waging war to try to take it away, but obviously his motives are all wrong, according to verse five or verse verse three. Sorry. So this is you know this can be taken at a macro and a micro level. I mean it's very timely with what the world is dealing with right now with Ukraine and Russia, but it's also timely in our own lives. Uh, maybe we don't wage war physically uh, with people, or but we fight hard to get what we want. Right? Um, we're so busy. Uh, in our lives trying to gather more stuff and gather more things and fight and work hard to get those things uh, and sometimes along the way we uh, talk bad about people uh, we step on other people as we climb up the ladder uh, at, at work uh, we do whatever it takes you hear that all the time do whatever it takes to win and uh, you know what James is telling us here is um, if our motives are wrong God will not make it, will not let it happen. If we ask God for it and we pray for it and our motives are right, God will provide. So let that be a, a lesson, the first part of James 4, about not only us as we look in the mirror, uh, but the war that is raging on the other side of the globe for me. Uh, pretty timely. All right, uh, verse 4. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Mm. We have got to make sure that we are not too close to this world. Although God created this world, our society is what we're talking about there. Our society has poisoned God's creation of, of uh, earth, uh, quite frankly. And we've got to be careful not to take too much pleasure, to get too focused on what is bringing us uh, rewards here on earth. Uh, because that is not what God wants. God wants us to live here, spread his good news, and be prepared for the kingdom in heaven. So let's go to verse 7. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. I mean, he is really reemphasizing the point of you have to make a decision. We all have to make a choice, okay? We all have to make a choice between God and this world. We can be in this world, but not of this world. I think somebody just, I saw that go by real quick on <laughs> the comments. We can be in the world, but not of the world. Please focus, be humble with God and focus and put all your loyalty on him. And if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. That's a great verse as well. Uh, all right, uh, where were we? Verse, uh, or chapter nine, or verse nine, I'm sorry. 
Let there, let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in his honor. Let's unpack that a little bit. So that's, uh, that's like the fifth time he's used the word humble yourself to the Lord in a very short paragraph. All right. Let's go back to verse uh, 9. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up in his honor. That's coming off of the um, line where it says, Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. So what he's saying there oof, is if you don't have regrets for your actions, if you don't have um, sorrow and, 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 and sadness for the, your sins, if you don't repent of your sins, then you haven't fully humbled yourself to God. Okay? So it's not just us believing in Christ and believing in God, but it's the fact that we've got to turn away from our sin. And if it talks about, uh, in verse 7, he talks about resist the devil and he will flee from you. We've got to resist the devil. Okay? We've got to humble ourselves to God and repent of our sins and even and be sad and sorrowful that we did those sins. Jesus died to forgive us of our sins, but it's, it's also us being sorrowful for our sins. It's not, hey, we're freely sinned and Jesus died for us. We're good. We're good. Right, I can move on down. It's fine. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. You've got to humble yourself to the Lord and ask for forgiveness and be repentive. Okay? Uh, verse 11, warning against judging others. This is something good because we judge each other a lot. Um, don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your jo job is to obey the law, not judge whether it applies to you. God alone, who gave the law, is the judge, in capital J in my Bible. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Wow, we only have one more left. So answer let's be let's be honest with each other for a second. Do you feel like you've judged other people? Especially other Christians. because uh, this is really talking about other Christians or other Israelites at the time, right? If you criticize and judge each other, you're criticizing and judging God's law. Okay? You're second guessing God if you're judging. It's not our job to judge. It says it right there. God alone who gave the law, is the judge. Period. Whew. James is full of deep, um, I would say, conviction messages. Uh, maybe for maybe for you. I know for me. Uh, and this is one reason I wanted to read James is because it's um, it touches me and it makes me it makes me feel humble because I know when I'm reading these words that God's talking to, to me. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not a huge judge of other people, but I know I'm guilty of it. I think you guys are too. It looks like in your comments, unfortunately. Uh, so it's not our job to judge. Uh, we can discuss with people and we can uh, uh, point them in the right direction and correct their behavior. But in terms of judging them and their faith and, and judging where they're going to be, uh, it's between them and God. All right, last uh, little section here of James 4. Warning against self-confidence. Look here, you who say today or tomorrow, we go into a certain town and we'll stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here for a little while, then it's gone. Oof. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or do that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is evil. Remember, remember it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Okay, there's a couple things we need to chit chat about on this one. Self confidence, I mean, that's the header of this. But in reality, what he's talking about here is you thinking you know more than God and you thinking that you're making plans, right? What's the old saying? Uh, you know, uh, you, you want to make, you know, you want to make God laugh, uh, you know, make plans on your own. Um, that's the truth. Even in um, verse 14, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It is here for a little while and then it's gone. Is that hard to hear? 
I mean, as you're reading that, and that's James 4, uh, verse 14. Um, as you're hearing that, whether you're reading along or whether you're just listening to me kind of read, uh, is that hard to hear? Is it hard to, to kind of look in the face of our own humanity and go, okay, our life is like a morning fog. Uh, God says right here in his word, it's here for a little while and then it's gone. Life is fleeting. That's crop master says. Yeah, absolutely. It's a hard pill to swallow, isn't it? Um, but it's the reality, right? And if you think about all of us have lost, lost loved ones, um, whether they're uh, grandparents or parents. My, my dad passed away a few years ago. It was very tough, right? Um, and and I, my cousin passed away um, Friday, Thursday, Thursday, um, 51 years old. Uh, he died the same age as my grandfather died, 51. Um, so I'm 48. I'll be 49 next month. Well, April. Um, that's only two years away from me. Uh, and, and sometimes when I heard that uh, my cousin had passed, uh, I, I took a step back and started thinking about my own kind of longevity on this world. And I'm fine. I'm ready to meet Jesus at any given time. I've made my peace with that, and I understand uh, that uh, you know the balance between uh, um, heaven and earth and, and, and life and eternity. I have a good grasp of that, right? I, I'm, I, I really do. Um, it doesn't mean that uh, I, I'm ready. I, I have... Uh, you know, I have two daughters. I, I have a, a beautiful wife. I've been married for 20 years. I'm not ready to leave yet. Uh, but that is better than this. Okay? And I realize that. Okay? But even that, with that perspective, and I feel like I got a good perspective on it. When you read verse 14, it talks about how how do you know your life, what your life will be like tomorrow. Your life is like a morning fog. It's here for a little while, and then it's gone. That is just a straight reality slap in the face from God going, guys, I'm, I'm talking to you guys about being humble and not judging each other and not being of this world. Are you listening to what I'm saying through James? That's what God is saying. Your life is short here. So while you're here, stop judging people, be humble, and repent of your sins. The entire Christianity is in James 4. Everything that God wants us to do Follow Christ, be humble, stop judging each other and love each other, right? And be aware that it's all going to come to an end here on earth at some time, but it's okay, i got something else planned for you, okay? i got something else planned for you that's better than here. But while you're here, love each other. Don't judge each other. Be humble. That's what God's telling us. Hmm. And then the last line, and I'll read, and then we'll get into questions here in a second, is, is a little bit of a turning point. In verse 17, remember, it is a sin to know, know what you ought to do, then not do it. So God's telling us all these things to, to, you know, to do and to not do, right? He wants us to draw close to God. Don't judge each other. Be humble. Repent of our sins, right? Don't plan too far ahead because you, you, you don't have control of that. He's telling you to do these things. <clears throat> and, and finally at the end, he, he comes back and says, it's a sin, not to do these things. Because you know, I just told you how to act. Now, it's a sin not to do those things. That's verse 17. I love James. So if, uh, hopefully you guys have read uh, James before. I've read it uh, uh, several times. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible. That's James 4. We'll finish up 5 on Friday. If you've read James before, uh, put a little hand raise in the comments and, uh, and let me know whether you've read it before and this is just a good revisiting. If this is your first time, uh, write first time in the comments. Um, I'd be interested to see how many people have never read or heard James before, and this is your first time. Uh, so write first time in the comments so I know that um, this is your first time ever hearing James. <clears throat> yep, I'm reading Matthew. Matthew's a great one, too. All right, we got some other people who have read James for the first time. Awesome. First time. Yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting book, and, and James is the half-brother of Jesus, so he's very close. Uh, and he was an interesting character, um, but it's a short book. But it is uh, it is so packed full of direction and, and, and perspective, uh, at least for me. I, I, I've read it I don't know how many times, and I come back to it. It's uh, when I'm struggling in life, and, and I'm struggling with decisions, and I'm struggling with perspective. Um, I'll come back to read James, and um, 
and it just kind of is chock full of goodness, as you've probably heard me say uh, five times. Uh, so anyways, um, all right, so we'll get to questions. Um, uh, as a reminder, a new episode of the podcast hits in the morning, so make sure you go to Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you go, and, and, and uh, get the notifications, turn the... Um, Turn the ring the bell on that thing so you get the notifications. I'll do a video version of that as well. If you're if you're a YouTuber, <laughs> I, I do uh, record myself uh, doing the podcast and I slap it over on the YouTube channel as well. So uh, you can kind of get it whether you want to watch it or whether you want to listen to it. Uh, I do thank everybody who's already uh, rated it on Apple. I logged into my little Apple admin this morning. I think we had ten or eleven uh, five star ratings already on the first episode. You guys are crazy. Uh, I love that. Um, so, you know, if you do, uh, you know, redu- leave a review, put a uh, rating on there. It helps uh, Apple bump it up so I can get some more views and uh, we can spread the good news to people. So I think it's important. It's not about me. Uh, it's why I don't call it the Kevin Jackson podcast. I call it, you know, Bible written and coffee drinking by living Christian. I want it to be about reading the word of God. Uh, and, and of course, drinking coffee because uh, that's that's my thing. Um, the, uh, I hope they have coffee in heaven. Is uh, what I always say. So, um, so I, uh, I I'm big on that. So I want to spread that news out. I want people to to hear the word of God. And I don't think we read our Bibles enough. So if I can read it for you, and you can hear it and, and absorb it just by me uh, reading it to you, then uh, uh, I will do that. I will be a humble servant of God uh, and read the Bible. Uh, every day uh, to you guys if I have to, but uh, I think it's an important thing to do. So, all right, uh, Paris, France, love your vids. Thanks, Paris, France. Uh, I need your coffee. Yeah, you do. You need your coffee. Uh, let's see what questions we have, and uh, we'll um, and we'll uh, wrap this up on our Monday. Uh, do you believe the second seal has been opened? First seal being the pandemic that conquered all. No, I don't think the pandemic was the first seal. I'm sorry. Uh, it is. Uh, you know, this pandemic is as bad as it is for us. Um, you know, we're not living in the Spanish flu or the uh, Black Plague or some of the other uh, pandemics that were uh, a lot worse than this. Uh, you know, these times, although they're challenging, um, I, I don't think that uh, this is uh, in the middle of the tribulation by any means. So that now the second uh, some, uh, you know, individual rises out of uh, uh, rises out of the Turkey area, uh, or in that area of the world, and uh, claims to be Jesus, or, or, or you know, works on a treaty with Israel for seven years, then my uh, my uh, radar is going to go up for sure. But until that happens, uh, I'm not uh, I'm not that concerned with it. I'm only concerned with uh, being as close to Jesus as I can be every day, just in case today is my last. So um, let's see. Do 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 do. Our vision boards against the Bible, not necessarily. We did just talk about, you know, in James 4, he talked about, you know, life is fleeting, life is like the morning fog, and and uh, and the fact that, uh, you know, why are you making so many plans? So be careful. I, I think uh, planning is good, uh, vision boards, it's whatever your method is, uh, as long as it doesn't detract you away from God and the gospel. I think that's the... the I think that's the focus, right? I don't think God wants me not to plan when what book I'm reading in my next podcast. Of course he does. Um, it's not about that. It's about thinking that you know more than God or not including God in those decisions in the future. So if you want to do a vision board or a planning calendar or whatever you want to do, that's fine. But make sure that God's in the middle of it. That's how I would uh, respond to that question. Um, all right, what happens when someone dies? Do they go to a heaven? Are they in like a deep sleep? Uh, there's a lot of debate on this. Um, I, I personal, uh, the way I view it, uh, I view uh, people going directly to heaven, uh, those that are believers, for two reasons, I would say. Uh, first reason, biblically, uh, Jesus is on the cross with the two other individuals. The thief, uh, I don't remember which side it was, if it mentions it, which side, but... Uh, believed in Jesus and believed that Jesus was the Messiah and was calling out to the Romans that he did nothing wrong and uh, asked Jesus to remember him. And Jesus' response was, I will see you in paradise. Okay? Bless you, child. Uh, You will be with me in paradise. So because the thief believed in Christ and and, uh, immediately he's going to be in paradise with Jesus. So that's that's first thing. That's biblically. Jesus doesn't talk about going to sleep Jesus doesn't talk about any sort of purgatory. He talks about the fact that in a moment, 
the thief is going to be with Jesus in paradise. That for me tells me I'm going. You know, heaven is right there. Second thing, I'm not sure if any of you guys um, have witnessed somebody pass away or not. Uh, many years ago, uh, my grandfather passed away. He had Alzheimer's, and uh, World War II vet, uh, just uh, one of the greatest uh, people I've ever known. Spent a lot of time with him, a lot of memories. Uh, and uh, I guess he passed away in, uh, oh, well, not 20 years ago, quite a, quite a bit. I think it was 03. Um, anyways, we were all in the room with him when he passed. And um, and he had kind of fallen asleep and was just laying there. We were all kind of waiting, right? The hospice was there and uh, was telling us, uh, kind of updating us, like, this is going to happen next. This is going to happen next. I see a little time. My grandfather was, he was laying on his side and he was kind of, his arms started moving out, right? Like he's laying down, his arms were moving out like he was trying to grab something. And we asked the hospice um, nurse there, like, what, 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 what's, what's going on here? Because I've never witnessed, you know, somebody pass away. And the hospice nurse said, well, this is, this is normal for, uh, you know, a good chunk of our patients. Uh, um, some people have woken up from this, uh, but most of the time this is right before they pass. And, uh, and we're asked, well, what, what do you think it is? And I'm like, well, the people that have woken back up have told us that they're reaching out for their loved ones because they're seeing their loved ones. Okay. So you're asking me if heaven is immediate. My grandfather is laying there, reaching out as five minutes before he passes away. Like legit, it was within five minutes. Reaching out for his loved one. So he's seeing his mother, my great-grandmother, my great-grandparents. I believe he's seeing them. And they're welcoming him to heaven. Uh, and there's a lot of stories about that that you can read online. So I firmly believe, sorry, this is a long answer to a short question, that heaven is immediate. Uh, and that's the way I believe it's biblical as well as, uh, you know, personal experience. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, you're right. Paul did mention absent from the body, present with the Lord. Absolutely. All right, uh, let's wrap up with prayer today. Uh, we're going to pray for um, uh, a couple things. Uh, we'll pray for the U Ukraine and um, and um, and Russia situation, which is terrible. Uh, we're going to pray for everybody today, based on James four, that may be feeling a little lost and needing direction uh, from God, uh, because that direction we just read. Uh, so we're going to uh, read about it as well. Okay. Uh, so let's bow our heads and pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, we thank you so much for bringing us together on this platform. I thank you every time that we pray on Instagram Lives that I'm just so incredibly grateful for this platform, for this technology, and for the people that are watching here. Our community, Lord, that you've built. I'm just a vessel. I'm just doing what you're asking me to. We've built over a million followers on Instagram alone, and, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of them. We're thankful that we can come together as a body of Christ across the world. Across the world, Lord. We are praising you on this Instagram Live from across the world. And we're so humbled to be in your presence. Lord, we have a lot of turmoil in our lives right now. I pray that everybody watching this video, Lord, you give them directions they can hear and read in James how you want us to react and what perspective you want from us and how you want us to move forward in our lives. Not over planning, not thinking that we can somehow control the future, but knowing that our life is like a morning fog and it will be gone. But when that happens, Lord, we will be with you. And we're so grateful for that. We're so grateful for that. But we need your help. We need your help staying focused. We need your help with our strength to get through these challenging times. Lord, be with the people of the Ukraine today. I know I've watched videos of Christians in Ukraine praying to you, Lord. To hear their prayers. I know you do. I know you have a better plan. I know you know how this ends, and we do not. So we're going to have faith in you. We're going to trust you. We're going to know that you know what the next step is. Because you've already got it figured out, Lord. And we're just humbled to be in your presence. Be with each and every person watching this right now as they go through their week. May you bless them and their family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right, guys. Whew, I love you guys. I'll post this on uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it's uh, Living Christian. You just look up U Living Christian on uh, on YouTube, and uh, and you can find it. Uh, always go to the website livingchristian.org. It has all the links on there to the videos, to the podcast, everything. Livingchristian.org, or just Google Living Christian. I think on the first thing that pops up. To be honest with you, uh, so uh, I've had the website long enough. We get enough traffic to just Google Living Christian, and you'll find the website. I promise you. And uh, all the links are on there to YouTube and everything else. So check it out. This uh, video will be up here shortly on YouTube, uh, and I'll put a thing on the Instagram story linking it over. So love you guys. Have a great week. Talk to y'all on Friday.